go to this We're finding our voice Calling you out You can't leave the world In fire and drought This is an SOS from the kids Please change the story Rewrite the plot This beautiful Welcome to the Vegan Organic Network's Save Our Wildlife Awards and thank you for joining this clean, green and cruelty-free growing revolution. My name is Luke Scott III. I'm out here in Mexico right now where we have just bought a plot of land and we're building an off-grid community where we can grow our own food veganically and in harmony with nature as much as possible. It's a very exciting project and I'm sure if you're tuning in, you're on board with that kind of thing. Uh, the Vegan Organic Network is all about educating people and supporting farmers to convert from animal farming to growing food using vegan organic methods. So this is called veganic farming. It's good for the soil. It's good for the wildlife, for the rivers, the oceans and for our health. It's the optimal way. So using no animal products at all. And uh, thank you so much. Everybody who's been a part of this Save Our Wildlife competition. This show is going to be announcing the winners for this video competition and the schools competition that we had. And we also have some really special guests for you. It's going to be incredibly exciting. And we're so grateful to everybody who submitted their videos and, and shared your inspiration with us for why we should help the wildlife, help our planet. And uh, one of the first people I want to introduce you to is the amazing Dan Graham, who works with the Vegan Organic Network. And he's just going to share a little bit about the competition and how it works. Hey, Dan. Hey, Luke. Thanks. Good to see you. Looks very tropical there. It's I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the competition um, came about, um, I think it was about a year ago. I was reading the Guardian newspaper 
and uh, came across some research uh, which uh, gave the biomass the weight of all the different mammals on the planet. Um, and when I read this, it seemed to really clarify um, some of the information which I already knew about, but it seemed a really good way of communicating the problems that we've got on the planet and why we've got those problems. So it seemed like an idea to share these statistics with, with everybody, with school children, with the general public, in the hope that they would feel the same way as me and they would in turn share it with their friends and their community and people would become better informed and be um, uh, better educated. So these were the statistics which I saw. So it said that um, of all the mammals on earth, I think there's about six and a half thousand different mammals on earth. And of all that six and a half mammals, when we put the weight of all the mammals on earth together, only 4% of all the mammals on earth were wildlife. And the farm animals, which are only half a dozen animals, um, were 60% of the biomass, the weight of all the animals put together. And then human beings were 36%. And these statistics were very, very alarming. And it seemed to me that what seems to be said, you know, humans eating animals take up 96% of the biomass. And it seemed pretty obvious to me as to what we needed to do in order to uh, create more wildlife on the planet. Uh, also in the same article, there was another statistic which said of all the birds on the planet, the weight you put all the weight of all the birds on the planet together, 70% of the birds on the planet are just chickens, which which is uh, which is um, a terrible state of affairs. So I thought, well, let's all get together and see if we can communicate this message with schools and with people sharing videos. Um, and that was the that's how the competition came about. And I'm pleased that everybody, schools and individuals, have taken part and have been very creative. And it's good to see other people's ideas and uh, how they think we can solve the problems we got on our planet at the moment. That was about it, Luke. Love it, Dan. And yeah, absolutely shocking. Like really crazy, isn't it? Uh, but most people are just completely unaware. Uh, and Dan, I know you were working on something pretty exciting while you were away at the COP26. Do you want to talk about the Vegan Trike TV? <laughs> Well, it was a group of us because the, the competition was also linked into COP26 and the, the conference there. Um, and I think a few weeks before the, uh, before the COP26, we thought, well, people have entered all these videos and have put hard work into creating videos to communicate a message of why we should move to a plant-based food system and why veganic uh, agriculture is good for the planet. So we decided to get together and build a TV on the side of a trike, which, um, here we go, there's a picture here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there was a picture in Glasgow, St. James's Square in uh, Glasgow. So yeah, go vegan for clean rivers, healthy trees. And it said, make peace with nature, which was the, uh, which was the it was a slogan from the uh, United Nations, make peace with nature. And so we so we drove the trike round. Uh, we were on different demonstrations where we joined together with hundreds of thousands of other people. We went on the Greta Thornburg march, um, and we also went on the uh, Friends of the Earth demonstration and joined together with thousands of people all, who all have a similar idea that they you know we need to move to a plant based food system. And they're saying to the organizers of the COP26, why wasn't um, animal agriculture on the agenda? Um, so this is the other side of the trike, um, vegan organic network, farming for a future, for re regenerating biodiversity, wildlife, clean rivers, and go vegan, go, go green, go vegan and heal the planet. So that was our, that was our message. We had lots of, um, and we had the videos that were entered for the competition, plus other videos. Um, we, when we were in uh, Glasgow, we came across um, Selesh Rao, who was also working um, on how to heal the planet. 
and he works for an organization called Climate Healers. So, and we've got Selesh here. We're lucky enough to have Selesh here today. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. That was such a beautiful song. It, it touched me to the core of my being. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed. Hi, Selesh. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you were doing in uh, at COP26? Yeah, I was trying to raise awareness of the fact that uh, if we don't address this, we don't have too many years left. You know, So we have to address this as quickly as possible. I mean, the statistic that you showed, Dan, that said that uh, wild animals are 4% of the biomass of, among mammals, it's actually declining every year and it's declining extremely fast. So we know that between 1970 and 2010, we wiped out 52% of all wild vertebrates and that became 58% by 2012 and 68% by 2016. And so we are now five years into it. So I think we are um, more than 80% gone. So which means that 4% is declining really fast and going towards zero. And this is why it's very important for us to go vegan as quickly as possible so that we have the time to bring back the forest and bring back the wild animals that we are losing so quickly. And, um, and, and I think it should, I think this is a good time to show your video, which I think explains very clearly what, what you're saying. So, uh, so thanks a lot, Selesh, for taking your time to come and join us. And this is uh, Selesh's video and good luck with all your work we're all we're all working for the same thing together and we'll see you soon Celeste. thanks a lot for coming on the show here's your video methane is a greenhouse gas that causes climate change so much has been emitted that life on earth is collapsing know where most of it comes from me But it's not my fault, it's yours. <laughs> to feed us, you tear down forests to create new grazing land. But we need trees to capture greenhouse gases. The climate disaster is human made, not cow made. But you can slow it, you can stop it. You must stop eating me. A plant-based diet is good for all us animals and the climate. You can make a difference. Transform to a plant-based diet. What a fantastic video and thank you so much, Celeste, for joining. And all the videos that were entered into the competition have been put into a draw. So we are going to be announcing a first, a second and a third prize. For the first and second prize, we asked you to choose the video that you like the best. And for the third prize, we have Carmen, who's here from Mad Ideas. Uh, Carmen's been helping with the competition and is going to make the draw. So exciting. <laughs> for some reason, Carmen hasn't appeared. So, oh, so we're going wow. to we're have to make a... Okay, I'll tell you what, Luke, if you think of a number from, from 1 to 10. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go for number seven. Number seven. Okay, number seven is the winner of the video competition. And it just so happens. The third prize. This is the third prize. And the winners of the third prize get a prize of £200 cash. Wow. And awesome. this is this is <laughs> not bad. That was just a random draw. That could have been any of the videos that were entered. Um, and but this I've got the I've got the videos here and this is the video that was entered that's won third prize. Here we go. Yes, the morning you've just seen are sadly true, and I'm here today to explain why we need to begin our shift towards a plant-based agriculture system in order to save our wildlife and our people. Out of all the mammals on the earth, excluding that 36% of them are human, this leaves a massive 60% of animals are purely farm animals, which only leaves 4% of the rest of the mammals to the wildlife. This is a shocking stat. Now, this all means that 8% of our agricultural land is used solely for farming livestock. 
And when you look at this in a people nourished by a hectic point of view, you realize that this is a rather inefficient style of farming and not the best way to feed our people. If we want to save our land, our wildlife and our people, then we need to utilize a plant-based style of farming, such as veganic farming, which is green, clean and cruelty-free. And more information can be found on the Vegan Organic Network website. Okay, well done to the third prize for winning £200 for entering the competition. And in second place, we have the winner of the £300 cash prize, which is Peer Warren's video called Change Your Dream. So well done, Piers. And here is Piers' video. So well done, Piers, for entering. And we had so many entries. It was really beautiful to see. And in first place, we have the incredible video called Wildlife Emergencies. And this is from one of my amazing friends uh, called Giles Bryant, who also is a part of the Perpetual Choirs, which is an incredible band that go around and a movement that goes around the country singing songs on different ley lines and uh, changing the whole vibration of the planet. And this video has been watched by over 2,000 people already on different social media channels. So welcome, Giles. Hello, Luke, and hello, Vegan Organic Network. I tell you, uh, well, I've got a long speech. I, I don't know how long I can go on. I'd like to thank the animals. I'd like to thank the Mother Earth. I'd like to thank all the people that voted for us. I think we have a deserved winner, actually, because I actually entered two songs. The first one I did, which was called Vegan Organic, I thought it had everything in it. But Dan said, oh, you know, you've got to make it about the wildlife emergency. So I wrote a song, recorded it with the, P the uh, Peace on Your Plate and the Perpetual Choirs Collective called The Wildlife Emergency. It's a groovy song, Luke. And what, what inspired you about this, Giles, obviously to put the effort in? Why, why is this really important to you? Well, I tell you, we're going to use that £500 top prize to, uh, we're going to put it all back into the music. We're going to put it all back into the vegan, uh, the vegan organic movement and really try and inspire people. You know, I love the animals, but I don't think it's the problem with the animals. I think it's the people that got nut jobbed. You're all right. You're in Mexico by your pool. But what about everyone else? What can we do? We can make the change. We can be the change. And I think if you follow a vegan organic lifestyle, you're doing the very best for your health, for the animals and for the planet. It's been explained to me. And I think we can really kick on from here and get this message out to a wider audience. Thank you, Dan, for organizing this wonderful competition. Thank you, everyone that voted for us as well. <laughs> So good. So here is the wildlife emergency from the Perpetual. Don't put this out for the vegan organic network, yeah. Come on. It's a wildlife emergency. The poison in the water and the cutting down trees. It's a wildlife emergency. Too much land use for animal feed. It's a wildlife emergency. Time to stand up like Gandhi G. It's a wildlife emergency. Vegan organic. It's a farm animal emergency, so much slaughter people never see. It's a farm animal emergency, so much suffering people never see. It's a farm animal emergency, time to be kind like Gandhi G. It's a farm animal emergency.
Amazing. And thank you so much, Giles. I know Giles is one of my personal friends and such a beautiful human as well. And he's doing amazing things for the planet and animals. And now we have the entries from the school competition. And so many schools entered this competition. And um, all the schools that took part have already been sent gifts, which include a copy of the Growing Green International magazine. Uh, they also were given some seeds to plant, which were donated by Garden Organics Heritage Seed Library. And they were given some willow wands to plant, which have been donated by Simon Reed. And here is a short video of the willow wands explaining how uh, what they are and how that works. And now I would like to welcome Katrina Fenton. And Katrina is the head of the Heritage Seed Library to give us some information about the seeds. Hey, Katrina. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. And so, thank you very much for inviting me on. Oh, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about the seeds. Uh, well, we're really pleased to be able to um, provide some seeds to to the schools, the winning schools taking part in this competition. Uh, and thanks for all their lovely pictures that we saw at the start of this. Um, these are all heritage varieties. Um, the Heritage Seed Library, we've been around now for the past 40 odd years, and uh, we're here to find, uh, grow and share heritage varieties that might otherwise be lost. Um, and we've been doing this for quite some time. We've got about 800 in our collection and we were able to share three of those varieties um, with schools. Uh, and we hope that you will enjoy um, growing them. Um, I had provided some some images. I don't know whether Dan is able to share those. Oh, here we go. Uh, so, yes, a little bit about ourselves. Um, we. Uh, like I say, we, we look after heritage varieties that are not commercially available. Um, and we know over the last hundred years, hundreds, if not thousands of, of heritage varieties have, have disappeared. Uh, and part of our collection is about getting people to grow and enjoy um, these varieties once more. Would you like to show the second slide, please? Uh, we're very much about um, growing. We're not a seed bank, we're a, a living collection, and we feel that the best way to conserve varieties is to get people growing and enjoying them again. And we do a lot of work out in communities. We've worked with schools, um, other, other settings uh, and community groups, looking at ways that we can bring heritage varieties back um, to where they once belonged and where they were once known and grown. We partner with organisations like the National Trust, with, uh, with um, uh, academic institutions to research our, our varieties and we provide training and advice so that people can save their own seeds. So a little bit about the varieties that we've provided to your schools and um, if you'd like to move on to one of the, 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 the seed packets that we've sent. Um, this is a typical example of a heritage variety we've got in our collection. Um, this is bronze arrows. It was quite uh, well known in back in the 1940s in the States and we, we acquired it back in the 1980s. Um, we know that it is, has certain drought um, resistance, it's quite cold hardy uh, and is an important genetic resource, an important um, part of our genetic resilience um, to, to have these varieties in the collection. Um, for you as a school, if you're growing these, all of our varieties, all of our vegetable types can be grown just as you would any modern cultivar um, and uh, you, you can sow them at the start of the year and harvest these uh, the, the, them as a salad throughout the year or even grow them for a whole year in order to grow them for seed. We have lots of advice on the Garden Organic website about how you can do that. Would you like to move on to the next variety? Uh, this is uh, Vetch's Perfection Pea. This is a good example of an ex-commercial variety that we have in our collection. Um, very often seed merchants such as Vetch's, um, they were quite uh, well known in the 19th century, um, were prolific producers of heritage varieties that could be bought and sold quite freely. Um, this is one example of, of one that is no longer available to buy, but one that we have in our collection. Um, it can be grown as a marrow fat type pea, kind of mushy pea variety, and uh, is an example of one that often reflects the, the culinary traditions that we once had um, in the UK. 
And finally, we have provided seed for a climbing French bean. And this one is called Mountaineer Half White Runner. It's a, it's a short climbing French bean. And again, you can grow it just like you would uh, any other French bean. Um, it grows so in the, in the spring and you can grow it to produce either um, fine pods that you can eat when they're quite young or as would have been more um, common with this uh, variety when it was grown back in the 18th century um, in the States, it would have been grown as a dried seed. So uh, three varieties which I hope you will enjoy. If you need any information about how to grow them, you can go onto the Garden Organic website, to tell you all about how to grow for food. And if you want to save your seed, which I'd certainly encourage you to do, it's really easy to do, particularly with peas and French beans, then again, look at how you can grow them and dry them and save the seed so you'll have more seed to grow yourself next year. Uh, so thank you for involving the Heritage Seed Library. We're really pleased to be able to provide you with those seeds and I hope you enjoy them. Thank you, Luke. Thank you so much. How super, super interesting. Uh, so four schools were awarded our main prize, which uh, is a day with Willow Weaver Cherry Chung. And those schools are, drum roll, brrr, Hillshot Infantry School and Nursery, Bromsgrove Proprietary School, Breeden Hill Middle School and New College Leicester. And here is Cherry, who's going to tell us all about her work and what she'll be doing at the schools. Hey, Cherry. Hi. Hi, Luke. Hi. Um, right. Um, I think uh, there may be some pictures as well uh, to follow. Um, I go into schools. I'm a willow artist and a basket maker, and I undertake quite a lot of projects in schools using willow to make sculpture and using um, techniques to make baskets and uh, random using the willow in different ways uh, with the children to make all sorts of structures. Some of them are small. Um, some of them are some of the internal structures and I use the willow as well to um, make living willow um, uh, projects um, so that's planting the willow in the ground um, and letting it grow and shaping it into um, a fence or a an outside classroom. Willow is really versatile and it's excellent for wildlife um, so it fits in really well with this competition because after the, after the oak tree in fact um, willows are second um, in how supportive they are in enriching to wildlife. Very early on in the year, they provide pollen to um, birds, not sorry, to bees and butterflies and uh, moths um, when, there are, when there are no other sources around really. And um, they provide, willow coppice provides um, habitats for birds and um, there are lots of insects that live on willow and um, you know they're part of the food chain of all the other things that um, are higher up the food chain um, that are supported by that. So when I come into the schools, I think um, we'll be able to make um, um, a sculpture of um, probably an insect or a bird or something that can be um, displayed inside or hung from a tree or, um, um, you know, um, an indoor or an outdoor sculpture. Um, so I think that's, um, that's, 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 how, that's how it's going to work and probably uh, there'll be some discussion with the school. I'll contact you beforehand and we can have a chat about um, what you'd like um, to see in school as well. Look forward to it. Fantastic. And I had the pleasure of seeing Cherry in action at the Vegan Organic Festival, which was great. And definitely make sure you get along to that next year. And I know those kids in those schools are going to have a great time. Just thank you so much, Cherry, for being just so amazing. Now it's time for the awards. With over 200 entries, everyone that took part is already a winner for the planet. The entries were split into key stages and each winner also received a gift voucher they can spend at the VEO online ethical shop. In the key stage one category, pupils were aged between five and seven years old. And the winners were <laughs> Louise Hatton from Hillshot Infant School and Nursery. And you can see her here with her certificate. And here's a photo of her picture. Uh, she did amazing stuff. <laughs> Another winner was Avery Asen from Hillshot Infant School and Nursery. And here you can see Avery and her picture, the selfless tree. And we also have a video of Avery as well. 
Here's Avery reading her poem, The Selfless Tree. Can we ever be as selfless as a tree? You provide shelter to anyone in need to, to our animal friends. You are always there indeed. You bear the fruits for everyone to eat. The air around us, you clean for us. To breathe, all these we will never forget, and make sure no not to take you for great granted. Granted. Well done, Anna. Can I just show them? Show them that? Oh, absolutely beautiful! We have Emily Powell from Bishop Lonsdale Primary School as well. And you can see her picture here. Amazing. We also had from Key Stage 2, this is years three to six, and the pupils are aged eight to 11 years. Uh, here we have Ria Gandesha from Bronze Grove Proprietary School. And you can see her certificate and her picture there as well. We also had Emily from St. Edward's Catholic Primary. And this is Emily's picture, you can see. And then from Eton Square School, we have Amy Sabir. And Amy uh, wrote an amazing poem, which I believe we're going to have it read out for you now. Amy's poem is about how all the living things on Earth are interconnected and the responsibility we have with the choices we make to protect and not to destroy. There is a bird by Amy Sabir. There is a bird in a tree staring out at the sea. The bird has brown feathers and tiny eyes, eyes like you and me. In that, the sea there is a fish swimming in the water, yellow, orange and green scales covering it. When it goes to the surface, it sees the beach in front of it with the bright yellow sand. On the beach there is a crab scuttling along. It's walking sideways, claws waving to and fro, hard shells, soft bodies. You can see a meadow. In the meadow there is a butterfly flapping its wings gently. It is plain white and flapping around the yew tree. On the yew tree it can see a squirrel clutching an acorn. On the tree, there is a squirrel climbing all about, searching for acorns and nuts and seeds to bury underground. The squirrel can see a pony trotting about the field. There is a pony in a field galloping all around. Its long brown mane is blowing in the wind and its hooves are making a banging sound. It has soft brown fur, very beautiful. And that pony over there can see you. We must all protect the animals, the birds, the fish, the crabs, the butterflies, the squirrels, the ponies, and many more. So we must all protect the world. Everyone, start doing this today. Thank you, Amy. What's a beautiful poem. Yes, we so often hear phrases such as save the wildlife and protect the planet that their meaning and importance is easily lost. In Amy's poem, she shows us how we are all linked. All of the individual choices and actions we take have an impact. And we can live in a way that does no harm, but does good. Thank you, Amy. I have incredibly high hopes for our planet with this future generation of these beautiful children who are here to help and, and raise the consciousness and hopefully bring more awareness to the plight of these animals and the planet. So let's move on to key stage three. This is year seven to nine and the pupils are aged between 12 and 14 years. And we have the amazing Ostea Bordov. Bordov, I am so sorry, Ostea, you have a very amazing surname that I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> Bordov Skyte and Morgan Douglas from Peterhead Academy. And I believe there is a video as well from Ostea. Hello, 
My name is Estea. I would just like to say I am very thankful for this award and I am very sorry that my friend Morgan couldn't be here today to celebrate with us. But while she's not here, I would just like to explain the meaning behind this poster that me and Morgan made. So first we have to save the wildlife, um, like every poster. And you would have expected like an animal between the hands or something like that, like a bird or a bear, any type of creature. But there's the earth. And me and Morgan decided to do the earth because every animal lives on earth, of course everyone knows that. And we'd like to represent every animal that is on earth. We don't want to just put like one bear and say save that one bear. We want to save every animal on the world. Again, I would just like to say I'm very thankful for the award. Um, bye bye. Hello, we are Alcinella. Thank you for the award and we really enjoyed participating in the competition. So that was Elsa Greenwood and Ella Crowley from Breeden Hill Middle School. And we also have an amazing group from Walton High. We have Dylan Foster, Leah Clamp, Papa Boa, uh, Lichelle Schumers and Atalia Charakupa. Again, apologies if I pronounced any of your names wrong. <laughs> well done, everybody. We're super, super proud of you all. Uh, from Key Stage 4, this is years 10 to 11. We have pupils aged between 15 and 16 years old. And we have the amazing Lanyas Mason from Nicholas Breakspear School. Here you can see the picture and the certificate. It's absolutely incredible. And we also have Erin Fullwood from New College Leicester. To destroy a gift. A gift bestowed upon us by the grace of a higher being or the universe herself. A mutt, a beast, a pet. Mammals, do we not share the same categorization, the same being as these wonderful creatures? So why do we hurt them? Why do we continue to destroy the places they once called home? To industrialize, to domesticate, to steal because we are selfish. We as a species are selfish. We as humans are selfish and destruction is the only thing we know how to do. An animal, rabid, wild, aggressive, an animal, delicate, intriguing, a man's best friend. So. Does a best friend continue to stab another in the back to destroy it until it's left with nothing? Using them for our own benefit. Is this really how selfish we are? Killing animals to test for our products. Killing animals to test for our food. Killing animals to make our clothes. It's a pattern. Us, us, us. But when will it be about them? Their health, their life, their food, their habitat. When will it be about them? Climate change destroying ice caps as we go on vacation. Habitats destroyed, while all we know about is industrialization. By 2070 is when we may realize all we have done, all we have destroyed. This is what happens when you leave imbeciles to run the earth. This is what happens when all you know how to do is destroy. Erin, thank you for such a powerful and passionate poem. And you're absolutely right. It's so important for us to stop hurting our fellow creatures, stop hurting the planet just for our own selfish needs. And it's one of the reasons that the Vegan Organic Network is so important to help raise awareness of these different challenges and so grateful to every single person who took part in this competition, for all of the teachers and the children and the sponsors and the supporters. This is what we need. We need this passion for the planet. This is what's going to fuel us to work for a more green and clean and cruelty-free world. And and together, we, the adults and the children, we need to educate each other so we can live more lightly on the planet. And what we eat and how we grow our food today will decide the future of tomorrow. I have a one-year-old daughter, and it's such a big motivator for me to think, what is the world going to be like when she's my age? And it's the choices that we make that will determine that. So I feel, again, incredibly optimistic because we have these young people who are really clued up and switched on, and they're... And they're, they're able to speak so powerfully as you just saw then so thank you so much for tuning in and we also need your support because we uh, would love to ask if you could help vote for us uh, for the first time ever the vegan organic network have been honored with nominations for the best vegan magazine and also in the favorite vegan community project category at the veg fest awards this is a big thing for us and um, please do go to our website and the details are all there about how you can vote it's veganorganic.net 
And you can also sign up for the newsletter called Growing Green, which is absolutely amazing. There are loads of free resources you can find on how to grow fruit and vegetables. And the, the magazine, if you join the subscription, you get it. Uh, and it's very, very powerful stuff. So a huge thank you to the Vegan Organ um, Organic Network for creating that amazing magazine too. So remember, let's stay wild. Let's stay positive. Let's speak up for the planet. Let's speak up for the animals. Let's educate people about this different way of being, this kind of way of being. And wishing you all the most magical holiday season. I hope you have beautiful times with your family. Sending you love and peace from myself and from everyone here at the Vegan Organic Network. And thank you to Dan for doing all of the magic in the background. Thank you to everybody who was involved in this whole competition. It takes so much work to create something like this. And I hope you're feeling like I am super filled up in your heart. And yeah, look forward to hearing more from you and getting to know you better in the future.